Yes, we are in the year 2024 and we're seeing Bible prophecy truly unfolding before our eyes. But you know, something that I came across that kind of opened my eyes more and more to the validity of Scripture and how Scripture proves itself is something that proves the Bible to be real are these two archaeological finds that have happened over the years that really did make me believe that the Bible is true. Um, one of them happened in Saudi Arabia, um, which really blew my mind in terms of what they actually found there, but also something in Israel that they found that really kind of validates scripture to be true. But more so, it shows that Bible prophecy and things that Christ said, we should be really paying attention to. You know, the first find that they found in Saudi Arabia from a man named Ron Wyatt with his archaeological finds, you should truly find interesting. What I'll ask you to do is to watch the full video just so you get the full context, but also smash the like button to get this out to as many as possible. Have a listen to this yourself. Valley comes out, there's a, a, a natural waterway, it's a dry riverbed, that is called a wadi, W-A-D-I. If you went into that wadi, you would find there are rocks all over the place, but they've all been pushed out of the way to make a path. Somebody pushed all the rocks out of the way to make a path for wagons, apparently. That dry riverbed, the wadi, ends up at that white dot, which you can barely see on from this satellite map. That white dot is actually this giant beach. Off to the right, you can see where that wadi comes into it, that dry riverbed. And at the bottom of that beach, way down there, which would be the south end, at the south end, Ron Wyatt found this pillar. It had fallen down, half in the water. He and his sons dragged it out, scrubbed it off. A lot of it was eroded, but part of it was still readable. And it basically said something to the effect of this pillar was erected by King Solomon to commemorate the crossing of the Red Sea. So they went and did some research. Uh, the National Geophysical Data Center in Boulder, Colorado has a map showing the depth of the water. How deep is the water? Above this red arrow, you can see where it says the Elan Deep, or Elit Deep. It's nearly 5,000 feet deep. The Gulf of Aqaba is. Incredibly deep water. South of there is the Aragonese Deep, which again is nearly 5,000 feet deep. But right where that arrow is, there's a shallow place. It's only 900 feet deep, which is still pretty deep. But 900 foot in eight or nine miles is a nice gentle slope down and a nice gentle slope up. Easy for wagons. There's an underwater land bridge right there. He says they walked across on dry ground, 900 foot wall of water on both sides. He went out to as deep as they could go, 100 feet or whatever, 150 feet with the scuba equipment, and found all along, as far as they could go, chariot wheels with no chariots attached to them. And chariot bodies crumbling badly, poorly conditioned, you know, with no wheels on them. They found horse skeletons and human skeletons crusted over with coral. The chariot wheels, you can see one here in this picture, it's kind of hard to see, but it's gold-plated wood, but the wood has rotted out. There's only one Egyptian dynasty that used Four-spoke, six-spoke, and eight-spoke, all three types used in this one dynasty. And all three are found down there, or something like that. If you look at the far right, <clears throat> this arrow is pointing to a mountain in Saudi Arabia called Jabal al-Laws, which means Mountain of Laws. It's been labeled that for centuries. Could Mount Sinai be in Arabia? Well, let's see what the Bible says. Galatians chapter 4 which gendereth the bondage, which is Agar, for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Hello, it's been there all along, folks. <laughs> Why have they been looking in the Sinai Peninsula? That's not where it is. This is a picture of the mountain that apparently is Mount Sinai. The top of it is still black. This may be the place where Moses got the Ten Commandments. At the bottom, you can see an altar with a calf on it. This may be the altar that uh, Moses or Aaron set up. Okay. God told Moses to uh, stand upon the rock. He said, Thou shalt smite the rock, and water will come out that the people may drink. Of course, most Bible pictures will show a little stream of water coming out. How long would it take to water two million people plus their cows and sheep? Oh, it'll take a little while, wouldn't it? This Bible map or Bible picture shows a little bigger stream. Well, that's getting closer. Actually, this building is from a taken picture taken from a half mile away. This rock is as tall as a five story building. It is split right down down the middle. Ron says, this is the place, this is the rock that split in half. And water came pouring out. You can see erosion marks. 
if, if, we, if we're worth getting his video, if you want to really study more on this, uh, called the Evidences video or Discoveries, I think it is, Ron Wyatt. In the 80s, a man named Ron Wyatt, and what he discovered in his finds blew my mind. But like always, I tell you, when we're looking at stuff like this, when it comes to these things, we really have to kind of stand back and look at the bigger picture and really look at what is going on. But have a listen uh, to kind of what happened with Ron and what he found when he's done his excavations. There's a tunnel called Jeremiah's Passageway that's caved in in several spots. Richard Reeves, who worked with Ron Wyatt, has been working on this for years, digging out this tunnel. Some places are still open, but uh, there's all kinds of tunnels under Jerusalem. I mean, there's another city under that city, okay? And who knows what hasn't been discovered. But apparently they took the Ark of the Covenant and all this temple furniture outside the city wall, but inside the siege wall. Well, if you look at where that arrow is pointing, that is Golgotha, the place where Jesus was crucified. The garden tomb is right there. Ron said he was digging outside there in Jeremiah's grotto area. He squeezed them, and there's a little cave about four feet high, and he saw several things in there. As he looked around with his flashlight, he found, for instance, the table of showbread, the golden table that the Jews had built 3,000 years ago. Jeremiah hid that stuff in there, built a false wall in front of it. And there's this concrete box, like a concrete, but it's actually a rock hollowed out. And when the lid was broken, according to Ron, he went over there and he looked at this lid and he couldn't see in it because the ceiling's too short. But all over this lid was a black stuff like dried ketchup. It turned out to be dried blood, according to Ron. Right above the crack in the lid was a crack in the ceiling of this little short cave. That crack in the ceiling went all the way up to where Jesus was crucified, 20 feet straight up through solid rock. Apparently Jesus died on the cross and his blood ran right down onto the mercy seat, which is where the blood was supposed to go when there was a sacrifice because Jeremiah had stuck it there 600 years earlier. You know, this really stood out to me more and more. If Ron Wyatt truly discovered the Ark of the Covenant below and the substance that he found could have truly be the blood of Christ. You know, what happened next and you know, his testimony on this particular instant really is an eye opener. Have a listen to Ron himself. When he found his blood, what he did and what the results were. Uh Dried blood is dead blood. Everybody knows that, all right? They can test the blood of the pharaohs, the mummies of the pharaohs, all right? There are certain things they can do. They cannot get a chromosome count by any method I'm familiar with, all right? Things keep changing. I don't profess to know everything. However, there's no way I know that you can get a chromosome count out of dead blood. You can get a DNA and some other things, but not a chromosome count, all right? That's done by living white blood cells. Now then, first of all, in this analysis, I took the blood into a laboratory in Israel. I asked one of the people I work with in, in antiquities, where is a good laboratory that does reliable work? And they said, such and such, such and such. I took it. I just said, please examine this blood and tell me what you can tell me about it. All right? They said, well, look, we're going to reconstitute it. We're going to put it in normal saline and keep it at body temperature for 72 hours with uh, gentle swirling, all right? That's their business. That's great. I said, now, I want to be there when you check it out. They said, fine. So I was back. They checked it out. I said, now, uh, they said, it's human blood. We can tell that. They did whatever tests they need to do. And then I said, take some of the white blood cells and put them in a growth medium. And keep them at body temperature for 48 hours. And they said, well, that'll do no good because it's dead blood. I said, would you please do that for me? And they said, okay, we'll do it. So anyway, I said, I want to be there when you take it out and examine it. So I was back there. They took it out, examined it under the microscope. And the one technician called the other one over there, and then they called the boss over there, and they were talking Hebrew a mile a minute there for a little bit, and they looked at me and they said, Mr. Wyatt, this human blood only has 24 chromosomes in it. 
Everybody else has 46. You see, 23 from your mother, 23 from your father, 22 autosomes from your mother, 22 autosomes from your father. You get an X from your mother, you may get an X or a Y from your father, all right? This blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side, one Y chromosome only. You see, the chi a child could not have developed if they hadn't had the autosomes from the mother. So all of his physical characteristics were determined by his mother's side of the family, her autosomes. His maleness was determined by this one Y that came from a source, not a human male. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, whose blood is this? I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. You know, the exciting thing about these finds, biblically speaking, it really gives us a solid foundation that the things that the Bible spoke about are absolutely true. Now, many people will say that these claims, because that's what they are, I can't physically prove them, that claims that they found these things. And I would believe the people in their sincerity but many people will try to disprove these with just utter nonsense. But really, we should look into these things ourselves. Now, from a biblical prophecy point of view, you know, if these things are claimed to be true, can you imagine the words of Christ? Because we know from historical writers that Jesus was a real person. He lived, he died, and most importantly, he rose from the dead. And these are the things that the disciples died for. But prophecy is truly unfolding before our eyes. We know that we're living right at the end, and I believe more and more things are going to come out to be true. What I'll ask you to do, regardless of all the chaos that's going on in the world, God is control. He truly is in control and remember, keep the faith.